All right, the ever popular sales rank analysis. Now this sheet is set up to help you understand where your rankings are going to be. And we'll show you how to customize it a little bit depending on if you're doing other categories. This is really built to showcase books because that's my specialty. Now, just a couple notes. We don't really have a way to separate your spreadsheet out by um, what type of inventory it is or what category they're in. So if you're selling books and CDs and DVDs, Obviously, in CDs and DVDs, most of your items are going to be under 250000 There's not very many CDs that have ranks in the millions, at least not that I've found. Um, I think there's only two or three million CDs out there total on Amazon, so you shouldn't be finding anything with ranks higher than that. Um, what I do for my sheet, because I'm 99% books, I do have a few CDs and DVDs out there. When I list those items, I just don't put a rank in there. And that's why you're seeing some stuff show up here as no listing. There's just no rank associated with them, and I did that on purpose. Um, so if you've got one particular category that you, that you want to track, make sure you keep ranks there and you get rid of the ranks elsewhere. And the way to do that, if let's say these were like for Soto, let's say these were all CDs for some reason, you could actually come in here and delete, just hit delete on your keyboard. You could delete the sales ranks and now you won't be factoring those in for me. And if your business is mostly books, you're going to be just fine with this. And, uh, so here's how it's set up. I've set it up based on some, some basic ranking structure, so 0 to 10,000, 10,000 to 100, et cetera, and then I go up to 5 million and 5 million plus. Now, we can look at the books listed in each of these ranges, as well as the books sold and the percent sold, and you can see a nice little uh, graph showing that. And this is, as you would expect for the most part, a little bit weird data here at the end, but books that have really great ranks when you listed them, and again, this isn't average rank, it's just the rank at the time that you presumably bought the book or listed it. Um, we've sold most of our books that have a great rank, and that's to be expected. These books have a lot of demand. They should be selling, and as you go up higher in rank, you should be selling fewer and fewer books. Now, right here in the 1 million to 5 million, I'm not really showing much of a difference. They're pretty much at the 55%. 5 million and up, really long-tail books for the most part. I've still sold almost a third of them. So again, if you're only buying books that are under a million rank, you're possibly missing out on a fair number of books that, are, that, that could be selling. You just have to have better strategies for those. We've also then tracking return on investment by rank. Um, a lot of times, and again, these are just a few of my sources, my ROI on the really great ranked books is actually a little bit lower than the rest uh, if you look at all of my inventory. And the reason is I'm willing to accept a lower ROI, let's say 100% to 200%. I'll spend a dollar if I can turn it into two because I'm relatively certain that books with a zero to 10,000 rank are going to sell. So if I can spend a dollar, I'm, I'm relatively certain they're gonna sell sell and uh, not only sell but sell quickly books that are much higher my roi is actually a little bit higher as well because the higher the rank i need a much higher list price you can see that here so we can see our average list price and you know for most of my books it's going to be you know the the really low rank my average list price is actually much lower it's 13 or 14 dollars because i know I, i'm relatively certain it's going to sell and sell quickly and again i'm okay accepting a little bit lower roi on uh, the higher the rank, so a million and up, my average price is $23. Two to three million, my average price is almost 30. Three to four, it's closer to $40. Four to five million, it's $60. And five million and plus, my rule is I don't touch it unless the lowest merchant fulfilled is at least 50. Uh, and you can see in this case, my average price is closer to 90. Um, so you can see my average costs, each of the rank ranges, the inbound shipping, Amazon's fees, the profit, and then the return. So I don't buy a lot of books that are ranked 5 million and up. In, in this case, it's just a very small percentage of my books. 58 books, I've sold again 30% or 18 of them. I've spent a total of $85 um, and I've made a profit of 560. So not bad. Um, again, I'm not gonna build an entire business around long tails, but they definitely make up a healthy portion of my inventory. And every once in a while when they sell, they can make your afternoon. So if you do want to edit this, and again, I don't recommend editing too much in the spreadsheet because you, you don't know what you'll do. You want to highlight both of these columns. You see it goes from A to D. That means B and C are hiding. So you can right click and say unhide. And this is where the magic or just the math happens. So what we've got set up here is these are what's going to show up on the chart. This sales rank here. And for some reason, Excel is a little bit wonky on me. There we go. These are the ranges that the uh, spreadsheet's feeding off of. So if you want to change the ranges, you can go ahead and change those here um, and then make sure you change what shows up here because this will change what shows up on the chart. So if you want to do 10K to 25K, if you're doing CDs, for example, you could do that and you're going to see an update on the chart as well. So make sure that uh, whatever you put here, this updates the chart 
these update the math as far as what shows up in your rank ranges. Now, one other thing, I'm gonna go ahead and rehide that so you can right click and say hide so you don't be tempted to get in there and mess anything up. One other thing you can do is the cutoff date right now is set to January 1st, 2050. Now what this does is this is gonna include every single book we've ever listed on Amazon and it's gonna show the metrics here. But what if you want, the problem with this is we haven't really given some of our longer tail items time to sell, especially if we listed them this month, they haven't even been on the market for a month, but they're possibly dragging down our metrics. So what we've done with this, we've kind of inserted a slicer and that's not the technical term, but what you can do is you can say, hey, I wanna look at all books that have been on the market for at least a year. So I have data through March 31, 2017. So let's do March 31, 2016. So now we're looking at books that have been on the market at least a year. It's gonna include every book we've listed up through March 31, 2016. You're gonna see these numbers change now. And as you would expect, we're gonna be selling more. So now most of our books under a million, we've sold 80 to 90, if not 95% of those books. Some of our higher rank stuff, again, if you're not touching stuff over a million, they sell eventually. They might not sell right away, but again, you can build a very um, promising business with a good mix of short tail, medium tail, and long tail books. So this will give you a good idea of these are all the books you've listed, about 4,000 books in this case. Um, prior to March 31, we've sold 76% of them, so not bad. Um, again, I put the date way out in the future so it includes all of your inventory, but if let's say we wanted to do a three month, so books, books that have been on the market at least three months, we could do January 1, 2017. Now we're looking at about 5,700 books and we can see how those numbers change as well. So that's it for the sales rank analysis.